Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Robert Saviola Show. My name is Eric Polanski, and uh, once again, we are having another guest today. Today, our guest is a San Francisco Bay Area architect, Richard Gage. Is, he's also a member of American Institute of Architects and the founder of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, our guest today is fresh off of a 32-city national tour, uh, and Buffalo was one of those cities that he visited. Uh, I was really sorry to see that uh, not one news outlet covered the event just a few weeks ago. Uh, most of you probably didn't even know that he was in town. Uh, and today, the only reason our guest is with us is because you're listening to the Robert Saviola Show, so congratulations. Uh, AE 911 Truth numbers more than 1,600 architects and engineers who are demanding a new investigation into the collapse of the three high-rise buildings in New York City on 9-11. Uh, Richard Gage's website is a e911truth.org and his latest documentary 9-11 Evid Explosive Evidence Experts Speak Out is a groundbreaking documentary packed with 43 experts who all agree that the official story of 9-11 and the collapse of the towers is impossible. The 9-11 truth movement is a not a one-man show and Richard your latest documentary is hardcore evidence that the truth will prevail. So welcome to the show Richard glad to have you. Thank you, Eric. It's my honor to be here with you. Richard, uh, you are off a 32-city tour. Uh, would you like to talk to us about uh, your experience on the road and, uh, and the, uh, the, how people received your, your documentary, please? Indeed. Um, we, we did reach uh, 3,500 people uh, directly on this tour, and uh, through local radio stations, uh, another half a million, and uh, we were delighted to bring the evidence for the explosive demolition of all three World Trade Center high-rises on 9-11. Um, I, I uh, was uh, honored to represent uh, the now 1,700 architects and engineers uh, for 9-11 Truth, um, these are they who have the technical credibility. These are building professionals for the most part, uh, and they are not conspiracy theorists. Uh, in this film, the 9-11 explosive evidence experts speak out, which we premiered across the country. Uh, Forty-three of these experts are laying out the evidence and we're talking about high-rise architects, structural engineers, metallurgists, chemists, physicists, fire protection engineers, firefighters, uh, as well as uh, scientists and physicists. Uh, they lay out the evidence so clearly. It, it's extraordinary, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to sharing it with you today, including the third worst structural failure in modern history that most architects and engineers and others know nothing about. And there's a reason uh, for that, which we'll get into, uh, but this is the destruction of World Trade Center 7. And that's where we begin in the film, uh, because most of us consider that we have uh, a, a great deal of understanding, uh, if you will, about the Twin Towers collapse on 9-11, um, or so they think. Uh, so we begin with World Trade Center 7 because it uh, sidesteps all of that bias and the emotional baggage that comes from the catastrophic uh, events uh, of 9-11 and the murder of almost 3,000 Americans. Well, yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, this is an unsolved crime. But, Richard, I must say that I know that you had a very lucrative, good career in the San Francisco Bay Area, and you, uh, you've you put that aside to do uh, architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, and today you're telling me over 1,700 architects and engineers are also doing the same thing, and that, that is quite extraordinary. Uh, I want to uh, co commend you for, for having the courage to stand up and giving the courage to others to do the same. 
Uh, R- Richard, we will be back uh, right after the break with uh, a full 10-minute segment. So everybody, thank you for listening. WBEN Radio 930 on the AM and 107.7 FM. Robert Saviola Show. Thank you. Welcome back to the Robert Saviola Show. We are with architects and engineers for 911truth.org founder Richard Gage, AIA. Uh, Richard, is it is important to stress that you are a member of the Architects uh, American Institute of Architects, and uh, and that's that's quite a uh, achievement. Uh, I'm I'm surprised that they haven't tried to take that away from you just because uh, of the work that you're doing, which is phenomenal work. Um, now you mentioned earlier in the they're first. Probably, sorry, Eric. I think they're probably trying to avoid any undue attention to our cause, and so they don't. Uh, they haven't been uh, hassling me at all. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Well, uh, in the first segment, you mentioned uh, Building 7, and, and many people that don't know that there was three buildings that came crashing down that day. Uh, what, uh, what is the uh, importance of Building 7? Well, uh, this building was the size of a football field each floor, and there's 47 floors, and it has 40,000 tons of steel steel in it, which is designed to keep that building up. In fact, it's five times stronger than it needs to be to do just that. And yet, in the afternoon of 9-11 at 5-20, it collapses from top to bottom in just under seven seconds. This is extraordinary. This is the worst failure in in, in the history of the world, other than the two twin towers uh, in, mo- in modern uh, uh, structural history. Um, and so, uh, and it, it, we're told by officials that this is due to normal office fires. Well, there were a few fires uh, in the building. Uh, they weren't that large, and uh, they're fairly scattered throughout the building. And yet, this building comes down symmetrically and as fast as a bowling ball falling off the side of it. In other words, free fall acceleration for a significant percentage of its fall. So this is amazing. I mean, we've seen this before, and and, and you listeners can see this, in fact, right now at ae911truth.org. That's our website, ae 911 truth.org, and you'll see it coming down uh, exactly in the manner of a classic controlled demolition. And so everybody gets it, just watching. They know what it is. They know that fire cannot and never has uh, caused the collapse of any skyscraper, but cannot possibly cause the collapse of a skyscraper uh, straight down, uniformly, symmetrically, at free fall acceleration into its own footprint, almost. So this is pretty amazing. You had uh, you had said to me uh, one time that uh, you don't need to be an architect or an engineer to know what happened that day, and uh, no, and, they, and I agree with that's you, right. and what Richard. What you have to do is put explosives on every one of the eighty columns to destroy them uh, on each of at least eight floors in order to get that building to fall like that. It's the only possible way. Go ahead. Well, I did see also uh, the uh, the initial uh, three or four seconds of the video, the fam- the now famous video, uh, where you can see the uh, the penthouse on the top buckle first. And, and that, uh, look, like you say, you don't need to be an architect or an engineer to know that that's what you do when you demolish a building. And, uh, yes, and the reason that happens, that top uh, penthouse dropped about a second prior to the overall building, that's because the core columns are all taken out at once, and that's the only way that penthouse can drop. And those core columns are the strongest, and and everything follows immediately after that in beautiful rhythm. It, it's actually the largest controlled demolition in history. And what do officials find at the base of this building? Uh, FEMA does, does an excellent study in their Appendix C, of the analysis of the steel, they document that there is the invasion of the grain boundaries of of the steel uh, 
by hot sulfur corrosion by liquid molten iron. What? Liquid molten iron uh, cutting through these the ends of these steel beams uh, and columns. This is this is amazing. This is extraordinary. It is direct evidence of explosive demolition, actually by incendiaries. Uh, incendiaries uh, thermite, in fact, is what they basically found. The 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 ends of the beams of liquid molten iron is a byproduct of thermite, an incendiary used by the military to cut through steel like a hot knife through butter. And there are patented thermite cutting devices that eject molten iron through the steel in just milliseconds. This is direct evidence. And yet, NIST, when they took over the investigation, NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, they ejected this from the report and as well as the hundreds of, of uh, witnesses that heard explosions that day. Uh, so we've got to uh, get a real investigation that looks Thank at all the Thank you very much. You're, you're, you're so right on, Richard. Uh, when it comes to this stuff, look, it's, uh, like I said, it's an unsolved crime, and, and, uh, and it still needs to be solved. And to get rid of evidence like this by... by an official source is just not uh it's it's not condonable that this is this is not right and things things need look at all you need to do is go and look at a video okay you don't need to be a genius all you got to do is be willing to look at a video to know what happened that day the pieces do not add up in any way shape or form uh that's the bottom line uh whether you choose to believe that or not is your choice um it's unfortunate that we've come this far and still uh, there's such a uh, a blackout of any information uh, on mainstream media. Uh, Richard, especially I do have... Of, yeah, especially the blackout of the destruction of all this steel. It was being recycled to China within two weeks of the event of 9-11. Total destruction, the illegal destruction of evidence, too. Listen, my friend, I have a, uh, a special guest with me here in the studio. His name is Doug Bergman. He would... Um, he's a big, big... Uh, researcher and and he has a question for you would you mind if he asks it not at all hey richard nice to talk to you you too doug um yeah i had a question um uh, the official story of nist um one that i've seen is that the uh the tr floor trussing gave way due to uh fire distorting uh the floor trusses and if you uh, bring up an uh, image of the construction of the World Trade Center, which you can just find by search engine, uh, you can see this massive um, core. And it's poured concrete and steel. And then you have an outer wall that's also massive. And then you have the relatively weak-looking flooring uh, between the two. And so I don't see how the uh, pancaking of these, even if they did start pancaking, it doesn't seem like it would tear down the entire structure. Richard, you have a minute and a half, sir. Indeed. Um, we're talking now about the Twin Towers, because after people un uh, understand that there's a real problem with what we've been told about World Trade Center 7, uh, we turn their attention to the Twin Towers because it was an extremely explosive event versus the implosion that we were just talking about with Building 7. And so the, the first story that came out uh, from FEMA, actually, was the pancaking theory that the floors uh, uh, stacked, uh, failed by sagging, due, as you suggested, due to the fires. Um, but uh, that uh, didn't hold because the, the videos... Uh, uh, don't show any floors stacked up at the bottom, as a matter of fact. And the, um, the, the, the failure, the destruction of the building for six seconds left core columns standing in the air. Um, so NIST came up with a column failure theory, where the upper, in the case of the North Tower, the upper 12 stories above the point of jet plane impacts theoretically drove the rest of the building down to the ground and crushing uh, floor by floor, everything underneath it, mercilessly. Uh, but this is uh, betrayed by those standing uh, core columns uh, six seconds after the collapse. It's also betrayed uh, by 
the fact that we don't see that upper block driving the rest of the building down. What we see is it in itself is telescoping in in the first four seconds. It's destroyed in the manner of a classic controlled demolition, an implosion, such that after four seconds there's nothing left because the structural members are disassociated, dismembered from each other. They don't, they're not in, in some uniform mass to drive anything at any speed down to the ground, and yet that building is destroyed also almost at freefall acceleration. And there are uh, evidence of explosions going off 20, 40, 60 stories down below this so-called uh, pancaking uh, collapse. Okay, uh, and, Richard, and there, I'm sorry to say, but uh, we're going to have to cut this interview short. Um, I thank you for coming on and speaking with us. We would love to speak again. Um, everybody, it's ae911truth.org. Our guest, Richard Gage, AIA. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll be right back.